With that, Ms. Lee, you are now recognized for your testimony. Thank you, Chairwoman Maloney and members of the committee for inviting me to speak to you today. My name is Kelsey Lee, and I came from Pittsburgh to tell you about the abortion that I had 22 weeks into a very wanted pregnancy. I had baby names on a short list. I had a Pinterest board full of ideas on how my two children, my three-year-old and my future baby, could share a room in our cozy century-old house. At every appointment, it seemed my pregnancy was healthy and progressing. But when I saw him on ultrasound for the first time, at 20 weeks, six days into my pregnancy, what I saw was not compatible with life, life as I define it. Healthy, quality, free of suffering. He wasn't moving. His limbs and neck were deformed. His umbilical cord had a structural anomaly. If my pregnancy continued, he likely wouldn't have had the ability to swallow. He may not have been able to breathe, and his bones would have broken during delivery, no matter the method. So I did what I knew was right for my son, myself, and my family. I chose to end my pregnancy. I could not and would not carry my son for four more months to give birth to him, knowing his life would be filled with pain and suffering. Pennsylvania's law allows abortions until 23 weeks, six days into pregnancy, so I was able to access comprehensive, compassionate abortion care within the legal window at a hospital just 10 minutes from my home. Just six weeks later, while I was still grieving and healing, I stood before a bank of cameras and pled with the Pennsylvania legislature not to pass a bill that would ban abortion at 20 weeks, a bill that would have banned my abortion and stripped me of my privacy in my most vulnerable moments. We stopped that legislation in its tracks. A year later, when the bill came up again, I went from office to office in Harrisburg, asking lawmakers to support people like me Enough lawmakers listened and understood the gravity of their responsibility that we stopped that bill from becoming a law. Pennsylvania's abortion laws are far from perfect. The state puts patients in a 24-hour timeout after trying to shame them out of getting an abortion with biased information. Among the demeaning questions I was subjected to was an offer to mail me a week-by-week -week fetal development guide. You can imagine how difficult that was for me to hear. But because lawmakers listened to their constituents, in this new reality the Supreme Court created, Pennsylvania is a beacon for patients in other states. I now work at Allegheny Reproductive Health Center where we are proud to provide abortion care. I schedule appointments and find patients the resources they need to travel to Pittsburgh and pay for their care. Two thirds of the calls I field in a given day are from patients who live in other states because the abortion ban going into effect across this country cannot and will not stop anyone from needing an abortion. No one calling owes me a justification for why they need their care. No one has to convince me or anyone else at our clinic of their worthiness of an abortion. They are each a human being and they each have the right to control their own body. Never, not once in my years of advocating for abortion access, have I talked to someone who deserved their abortion less than I did. The people you each represent do not want abortion to be illegal. Your constituents are mothers like me, are young people with dreams and plans, and we're all citizens who should be allowed to make our own decisions about our health, our bodies, and our futures. So in this moment where you as lawmakers have been given the green light to take away our power of our most personal decisions, I want to close by asking you this question. Who are you going to be? Will you sit in judgment of people who are pregnant without knowing them or their circumstances? Or will you listen to me, to us, 
and be the compassion that our country so desperately needs right now. Thank you.